Okay, first question. What is your full name and why were you named this? My full name is Jesse Ridgway, and um, I was named this by my parents because I was actually supposed to be a girl, um, and they were going to name me Jessica. However, I came out, was totally a man, and they switched it over to the male form, which is Jesse. Um, I also believe I have a great uncle named Jesse, but I think this was just something my parents told me to make me feel better because I was supposed to be a girl. Okay, next question. What are the names of your parents and siblings? I have two parents, a mom and a dad. I have to clarify that these days. Um, my mom's name is Teresa Ridgway. My dad's name is Jeff Ridgway. And I have a brother who's older than me uh, by three years, and his name is Jeffrey Ridgway. What is the date and place of your birth? Um, I actually don't know the place. I was born uh, September 29th, 1992. What was your schooling like? That is, how did you get to school? Uh, what class did you have? And what was your favorite subject? My school was like that of an average student. I went to public school. I would take the bus every morning. Um, my parents never drove me. It was just because they had to work. So I would just be waiting at the end of the driveway. School bus would pick me up. Uh, I took, you know, your standard classes. I, I took, you know, English, history, math, uh, science, gym. Cause that's class lunch my favorite subject i mean if they count I, I'm, I'm gonna have to go with gym or lunch because you know you got to just play sports or just have a good time with your friends at gym or you got to eat at lunch but if i had to pick a, a core subject i'd go with english just because i felt like that was um where i did well at so it was like whatever subject i performed well at i usually ended up liking it I did you get married if so who when and where I am not married yet. I am single um, and will probably be staying single for the next five years. I am 24 years old. What major illnesses or health problems do you remember having? When I was eight years old, I burned my feet on hot tar and was hospitalized for a few weeks and was restricted to a wheelchair for a month or two and then was using crutches for a while. I was bitten by my dog at age eight as well. Had to get stitches on my head. Um, I contracted mononucleosis like two years ago, which had me bedridden for a couple weeks. And uh, just recently, I actually had adhesions on, uh, near my colon and my lower left abdominal, which I had to get uh, exploratory surgery for and fix because they couldn't find out what's, what's wrong with me. Do you currently have any health problems and are they considered hereditary in nature? I actually don't have any health problems currently. I'm still recovering from a surgery from three or four months ago. However, uh, I'm perfectly healthy. Do you remember your grandparents describing their lives? And if so, what did they say? I've had a few conversations with my grandparents about uh, back in the day. They speak like they, they talk about how it was definitely a lot different. There wasn't cell phones. There wasn't computers. Um, they talk about just how different today's world is and they miss the old ways they they wish these changes wouldn't happen and it seems like they're, they're just confused with how the world works now it's just a lot more complex with um all this new technology and it seems like they just they miss the good old days and it seems like things have gotten progressively worse as you got older and as you get older so uh it's really reassuring do you remember your great grandparents and what do you know about them i actually uh i only know one um my my mom mom who was actually uh my great grandma but we called her my mom and uh she died a few years ago but we would always go to her house for thanksgiving and uh she was pretty quiet she was very nice and she cooked a mean thanksgiving dinner so uh that's really i would only really see her at thanksgiving um my other great grandparents though passed away who is the oldest person in your family that you can remember from a child and what do you know about that person uh, that is actually the same person. I think she was in her mid, mid nineties, early nineties, and um, that's that's the extent I remember from about her. What would you consider to be the most important invention during your lifetime? In the last twenty four years, there's been so many technological advancements. It's hard to pick just one invention that has been the most influential. If I had to say one, I'd say something related to the computer. Possibly the internet. I mean, they all kind of depend on each other, so it's tough. 
but I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the cell phone um, just because it kind of used the internet and computing systems and it allowed this ability to talk to anyone at any time anywhere via text via phone call via FaceTime Skype you name it the fact that I'm able to record this interview and send it without even having to be nearby somebody is absolutely crazy. So that is the most important invention during my lifetime for sure, at least to date. The how is the world different now from when you were a child? The world is vastly changed. Like I was saying with how my grandparents were saying, it's just a different world. The, the fact that you, it's instant communication. Um, people can work from home without having to drive anywhere. Um, you know, the fact that there are online jobs, like I'm, I'm a big YouTuber, and the fact that I can film videos in my home, put it out on the internet for the whole world to see, uh, is, is a very strange concept. And I, I think just how, how far video games have come is, is absolutely insane. To see how far cars have come, um, and, and, and it's crazy, you know, we had, just to see the presidents in recent years, you know, we had a black president, we had, we almost had the first female president, and uh, with gay marriage and, and legalization of marijuana, it's crazy to see all these different changes happen uh, just in my lifetime. It's like things are becoming more liberalized and open um, compared to years ago where it seems like uh, these things weren't even talked about. As you see it, what are the biggest problems that face our nation and how can they be solved? In my opinion, and every, everybody's different, and there's, there's so many different things to take into account, but I think our two biggest, maybe three of our biggest problems, one is overpopulation, number two is global warming, and number three is the effects of those two and how they could very easily cause so much uh, poverty uh, starvation, dehydration, you name it. It, it. If if we don't change how we treat the world, if we continue to cut down trees, you know, we've lost like maybe over two thirds of the rainforest in the world just for, you know, industrialization. And, um, you know, we global warming is a real thing and it's threatening all of us. And the fact that we're exponentially getting more overpopulated, there's already people starving and Products are going to start to become more manufactured and more processed just to meet demands. Things are going to get more costly, and it's just going to lead to so many issues. And then also the huge uh, thunderstorms and, and weather conditions that global warming will bring about. It's just we're heading down a track. Um, however, you know, we're not going to see these effects too much, or at least it's not going to become clear because it's in the short run. Um, but if you look at the long run, it's not going to be good. How do you think these issues can be solved? I think we've been working on more initiatives too. Uh, like we, I think we need to come together as a world instead of dividing. I think the fact that we divide ourselves by country and by state is already an issue. If we thought of ourselves as one united world um, against a common issue, which is ourselves, I think we then can uh, move on. But for as long as we divide ourselves and think about how different we are from each other, nothing's going to change. Do you remember anything that your children did when they were small that really amazed you? So I don't have any children. However, uh, my experiences with my one friend's children, um, something I noticed that kids do is that they're just, uh, they have so much energy. And I, I think it comes from, it's like when you play something or do something for the first time, it's really exciting because it's a new experience. And I think for kids, their new experience is living, is having a vehicle to experience the world in is a body and, and eyes and, and mouth and, and senses and things to consume information. And I, I, you can just, I love the innocent excitement that they have as, as they experience the world for the first time. What is one of the most unusual things that one of these children did regularly when they were small? These children, I just, I just find it interesting how they, almost speak their own language they it's kind of like babble and they just they don't you don't you can't really tell what they're saying but it's so earnest like you can tell what they're saying matters to them like a lot and it's just uh it's just really fascinating to see what is the funniest thing that you can remember that one of these children said or did 
Like I showed um, one of the kids who was four years old how to make a slingshot and he knows how to make it months later and it was just a fluke thing. Um, so it's crazy to see also when, when the kids say something that you might have said in a whisper, you know, months prior and it's like, yo, they just said the same thing that I said and, you know, they're very, very influential. Where have you lived as an adult and list the places and years that you lived there? I've only ever lived in the same place my whole life. Uh, it's my parents' house in uh, southern New Jersey and I've lived here for 24 years and that's the only place. Why are you living where you're living today? I'm currently still living in this house. I have the funds needed to move out. I could move somewhere. However, um, I think it's a stigma that you should move out of your parents' house. You know, if your if your family is good um, and, and nice and supportive, then there's not a huge pressing issue to move out. Um, so it's great to have a support group and uh, people that you love and care about. You know, it would hurt to to leave. Um, but yeah, it's also makes sense for my career. I do YouTube videos and I need a cast and crew and my family and friends who are all around here provide that for me. So it is, uh, it makes sense. Do you wish you lived somewhere else? If so, where? The only thing I would really change is the location that I'm in is pretty rural. So there's a lot of farms. I wish I lived like maybe five or 10 minutes closer to a city. If I wanted to go food shopping or to go get food or just to go out somewhere, I would need to drive at least 15 minutes. So that gets to be a little annoying. If I could live anywhere, I'd probably want to live in LA because ultimately, you know, I am a filmmaker. So to be in or near Hollywood uh, would be uh, ideal. As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? When I was really little, I wanted to be a cop, a fireman, a doctor. <laughs> and that's only because... They get talked about all the time as being the greatest people in the world, the heroes, and that's just what was like the most, the high, the most highest paying, and that was something that teachers would tell us and that society taught us. So literally, I was a product of society when I was younger, and could, you know, I was unable to think for myself, nor do many children at that age. Um, when I started to get a little older, I wanted to be a chef, just because I enjoyed cooking. Like I, I would heat up Chef Boyardee and pretend like I was some five-star chef and I would taste it and be like, wow, this is, this is incredible. I would rate it like Chef Ramsay or like spit it out. Um, but then as I started to uh, watch TV and realize that you could actually make these shows and films for a living, that is when I said, you know what, I want to do this for my job. I want to make movies. I want to make shows. I want to feel... The things I would feel watching TV, I wanted to provide that for somebody else. And that's what I wanted to be when I grew up, and, and that's what I get to do. What was your first job? My first job was working for my dad mowing lawns. What kinds of other jobs have you had? So I've mowed lawns for my dad. I actually uh, worked at a, a plumbing shop for a year. I was referred to as the shop bitch, dare I say, because I pretty much got my hands dirty, got on my knees, did whatever I had to do uh, as instructed by the boss. I worked at a, a Newfield bank uh, from like five or six in the morning to like four or five at night and handling people's money. I once uh, I sold people stuff on eBay. I did that for a period of time. I started my own business called Zipline, which was before Uber where uh, you would call me up and or text me and I would come give you a ride and I even was registered in the state of New Jersey. And then when Uber came out, I was a little upset about that, another billion dollar industry. Kind of missed the boat with that one, but I was there. And uh, now my latest job is YouTube and I'm a YouTuber. How did you decide on your career? YouTube sort of found me. Uh, it just be, kind of became a thing. I had been doing YouTube casually since I was 14, saw people were making money off of it and I decided to go all in and committed myself to it and the checks started rolling in. I started getting more and more views and that became my career. Um, I ultimately wanted to do film and it was just the feeling. It was the passion. It was some kind of pool I had inside me that was like, I need to be doing this or else I won't be happy. If you served in the military, when and where did you serve, and what were your duties? Were you ever injured in the line of duty, and if so, what were the circumstances, and what were your injuries? Actually, I've never served in the military, 
um, back many years ago. I'd say maybe like six years ago. I think when I turned 18, I had thoughts about it because I heard that the military would pay off my college because um, I wasn't ready to pay that. And uh, I also didn't have much direction in my life, so I was going to just jump in. What is the most beautiful place you have ever visited and what was it like? The most beautiful place I've ever visited was Switzerland, uh, a town called Zermatt. And there was gigantic mountains, so picturesque. Uh, it was extremely uh, bright, colorful. There was these rolling fields and hills and the arch architecture of the houses in this canyon. It was just absolutely breathtaking uh, to see these mountains, massive. The Matterhorn Mountain uh, is absolutely incredible to see. What is the longest trip you have ever gone on and where did you go? I think the longest trip I've ever done was maybe nine days in Mexico. Uh, I think it was Cancun and that was all inclusive and there's just a lot of drinking and eating and uh, I think I put on like 20 pounds, but uh, that was the longest. I would never go on a nine day bender in Mexico again. It's just too long for that type of vacation. What was your favorite vacation? Where did you go and why was it special? My favorite vacation probably was the trip to Switzerland um, in Zermatt. Why was it so special? The, the area itself was absolutely beautiful, but it was the place where I ended my three and a half year long YouTube series with my family. Um, it was the culmination of everything. So it was extremely memorable and heartfelt. Like it was a life defining moment to be in that uh, country and to experience that with, all, with my whole family. Uh, it was incredible. What is the favorite place you have ever visited and what was it like? I hate to repeat the same answer, but Switzerland, it was just, it's just one of those places. And I think you could tell uh, by my answers, that is, that was just the greatest experience of a lifetime. I would, I would do it again in a heartbeat, 100%. What person had the most positive influence on your life? What did he or she do to influence you? I'd say my biggest influence on my life has to be my parents. I hate to, I can't pick just one kind of like they can't, they couldn't pick a favorite child, but, uh, it's just, they've, they've done so much for me. They provided so much. They helped me with all these videos and they've, they've supported me through everything. Um, sometimes it was harder than others and we've gotten into plenty of fights, but they're always there for me and they don't ask for too much. And they've shown me what, um, They've, they've shown me how to care some for somebody without, without thinking selfishly. Is there a person that really changed the course of your life by something that he or she did and how did it happen? I would have to say my parents, it's just, if they, if they didn't, if they didn't sacrifice themselves to, to, to allow me to be happy and to help me with my career and goals and dreams, uh, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So, uh, I would kind of owe everything to them. Do you remember someone saying something to you that had a big impact on how you lived your life? It's hard to say. It's hard to pick any one person that has had a profound impact. I have a lot of people in my life that have had that have said many encouraging things, and I have also have a lot of heroes that I look up to um, in Hollywood that have said certain inspiring things. Uh, it's just I don't think it's ever just one thing, and I, I think it's a it's a hard question to answer because. There's just so many people and there's so many influences that pull you in every which direction. And I think it's all the little pieces that add up. So the more people you have that support you, the better.